Turbo Conquering Mega Eagle. <coughs> Hating folks. So here you're joining me for the uh, construction of the rear axle of Dump Truck Mark II. Yeah, the starting point is this uh, cute little Chinese diff that I got. Um, just uh, taking some measurements. I'm going to start off making the axle tubes for this axle. It's going to be a, a solid or live axle, but it's not really going to be live at all because uh, it's going to be bolted up without any suspension. So I don't suppose you can call it live, can you? Dead, a dead axle. <laughs> Removing bits inside. Yeah. We've got a bit of a bit of ten mil or three apes um, structural steel that I've harvested for the uh, for the thick flat parts. Yeah. <clears throat> These are the flanges that are going to bolt to the to the diff to the axle tubes. I always torn between plasma cutter and angle grinder. Like plasma cutter is a lot quicker, isn't it? But, uh, but what? It, it leaves an awful mess on the steel, doesn't it? And I wasn't in the mood for cleaning that mess up, so we went with the, the angle grinder. I've got three bits here. Yeah, one of them's a uh, one of them's the the fixture, which which I'm going to use to turn the other two. So um, <clears throat> that is one of the challenges of this job. You know, working working around having a little lathe and, and not having a face plate for the lathe. That would have made life a lot quicker if I'd uh, if I'd had a face plate, but I don't. Just getting it as round as possible before it goes in the lathe here. And there we go. Three little blanks. Ha ha ha. Steam. Yeah, so that's the part I turn to holding the the chuck of the lathe. <clears throat> Just welding that on the back of one of them, and then tapping the other two because I want the bolt heads to be on the side with the fixture so I can I can face the two items that I'm going to use as flanges for the tube and these are tapped undersized because eventually they're gonna they're gonna be plain holes that take the bolt through to the hub uh, diff and there's the fixture face that off putting the bolt through from the back I have a hole I've got six or seven inches on the lathe Even if I did have a chuck big enough, you can see there's not the clearance around the outside of this part before it hits the saddle. So uh, it's the only way to do it really, for me. Putting features on them, just chamfering the corner outside and this is the, this is the side that's going to actually make up with the diff and because there's oil in the axle um, I've got to seal it up somehow so I'm just cutting a groove for, for an o-ring to sit in there and there we go there's one of them bolted to the diff lovely That's the bit of tube I'm going to use. I put a register, so there's a, there's two bore sizes on the inside of this flange. It's a, a shoulder for the tube to butt up against, basically. Um, it means I don't have to be quite so wary about jigging the thing up and getting it all square because the you know the features on the inside will keep it share, square. So here's the old uh, rapid or hacksaw. Meeting a lump of 75 mil mild steel. Yes. I'll finish off painting this thing one day. Probably pretty soon, I'd, I'd like to tidy it all up, I do like that machine, very handy. And all the, all the blanks that I cut out of that bar, all bits there. So these are the, the other end of the axle tube. Um, the housings for the bearings if you like. 
just gonna slowly slowly bore it out. Yeah. You know it's funny, I'm using the uh the pond pump that I've had in this this lathe for, for ages. I think I was bragging about how how the pond pump's great when I was doing the hacksaw video. Uh and it broke just as I was making this video. It has been in there four years or so, I think. As long as I've had the lathe, a bit longer than that probably. Six years maybe. And this is the, the cap, the bearing retaining cap that I'm just making here. Uh, so what? The bearing goes in that big bit and, oh, you'll see anyway. There's no point telling you everything. Spoiler and a surprise. There we go. Lovely. 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 Just marking this up because this is going to... This is going to screw to the uh, to the bearing housing. Get some holes there. The holes everywhere. There we go. That's a good Tappy tap tap. I didn't really want to stick this in the lathe but it's the easiest fastest way of getting square ends on it and I'm kind of relying on everything the features that I machined into the, the parts and square ends on this tube to get to get the axle lined up yeah, and by, this, by this stage the pond pump in the in the lathe stopped working so I'm using a squirty bottle again uh, there we go the axle tube. I'm just going to balance a bit of uh, an off cut of bulldozer on top to uh, to keep it all in place whilst I weld it. There you go. Piece of bulldozer. Yeah, it doesn't want to balance, does it? <laughs> I should use the clamp, really, but I mean this this worked fine. I was really nervous about welding this up, you know, because you, you make a bit of heat in the wrong place and it's going to warp, isn't it? So I tried to put as little heat in as possible and also keep it symmetrical as I was welding it. Right, I'm putting a double on now to take the um, to take the attachment point. So this is just a, a bit of the same tube that I've I've slit in half and welded, and now I'm making the the brackets that attach it to the to the axle that attach the, the rest of the truck to the axle. What I wanted to do here is put the um, put the rear pivot for the for the tipper body, mount it directly onto the axle. Um, so this has got a pickup for the for the chassis, and the big holes at one end are, are the attachment point for the tipper or the pivot for the tipper. I'll stick some grease points in there as well. I think. I had to chain drill this again because I'm not using the plasma cutter. But I don't know. Sometimes it's less of a headache, isn't it, to to do things by hand and get the plasma cutter out, I suppose. square it up and weld it to the axle. I've got the, the two bits bolted together here. I thought that would be the best way to keep it all square rather than bolt it to the diff. Um, wouldn't have made any difference but... Now onto the drive shafts themselves. Eh? This is, this is the, probably the more challenging aspect of this axle build. welding a nut onto the shaft that I'm going to use. That nut's temporary, yeah? And the whole point of that nut is because I don't have um, you know, like a hex a hex collet chuck or something like that. The the nuts to index it in my in my vise. You can see there the, the vise is gripping the nut but nothing else. So I can I can set the mill up. This is my tiny little mill if you haven't seen it before. I think it's probably the smallest possible horizontal mill you could ever buy or find. But it's perfect for me at the minute because my I don't think the floor of my shed's going to take any more weight than than what's there already because it's already starting to crack. I need a bigger workshop, folks, with a decent floor, and then I can get a proper mill. But I do like this little thing; it's fun. You've got to be very careful with it, though. Keep the keep the feed right down. Oh. 
Oh, I've done it, lads. I've, I've, I've done it. I've finally done it. Like three, three nights in a row, I've been in here trying to get a spline cut. Um, there's been lots of tears, lots of mistakes. You know, that's a gefaffled end. That didn't turn out right. But I've finally produced a spline that goes into the female splines. It's lovely and tight, but not too tight. Seems to fit all the way around. Oh. There we go, you know, I'm not hammering it in there, but it's, uh, we're there, we're there. Only a few more to go now, <laughs> but that's, you know, the first one done. I, I should be very happy, but I'm pretty bloody tired right now. Uh, there we go. I, originally I tried a nut, just welded on there, wasn't taking it seriously. Uh, this is a, another nut, a different nut, there are more than one nut. Um, which I reamed out so as a close fit on this ground round 25mm and uh, there's little grub screws in there you see that? little grub screw another one on that side another little grub screw we got there we're there I haven't filmed it much of it because it's been a huge amount of trial and error but um, yeah I'll just knock another one of these up and that's the, the hardest bit of the whole build done, I think. Oh no, wait, <laughs> I've got to figure out how to do internal splines on the, uh, on the dry shaft, yeah. It's going to be great, isn't it? All right. I haven't got a clue what that guy was saying. Don't listen to a word he says, eh? Right, so, uh, you can see that I've welded a, welded a, um, a lump of something on the end of this drive shaft so this is the the outer end of the drive shaft we're going to put the features in so it can sit in a bearing take the hub and also take a take a nut to hold the whole lot together yep. and this is the this is a lump of steel that's going to come on the other side of the bearing basically then the hub's going to pinch the, the outer edge of the bearing. I think the camera started fogging up at this point, so uh, so what? Uh, and this is the second drive shaft, so I didn't manage to catch all the uh, all the drive shaft turning operation on camera which is okay because I don't know I think I think you can get a bit bored of watching uh watching turning on the on the lathe for too long here we go I've got to sort this camera out I've got to buy a load of desiccant and stick it in an airtight box or something with the camera because this is a uh, this keeps happening to me and I'm, the only way I've got to fix it is to sit it in front of the fire in the house to warm it up a bit here we go we're just putting a thread on the on the very end of the drive shaft now shaft I suppose, not a drive shaft is it? Half shaft. Oh, this is completely pointless, I just wanted to uh, to waste, like, narrow the um, uh, the middle of the drive shaft. No no reason to do this, weight, weight really isn't an issue for me in this build I don't think, um, but I just wanted to do it. There we go. Lovely. <laughs> okay. Right now to the uh, the last the last component of this axle, I think. This is the the hub. This this has got bolt on the um on the end of the half shaft. But yeah, we really need to fix my son's pump. making swarf. Let's 
so much water. I just got myself a radius cutter as well. Works incredibly good for, for turning weld down, but um, yeah, I'm just using it for its intended purpose here for actually cutting a radius. Not because I had to, just because I wanted to. And then this end's got a step in it and some heavy chamfers to uh, to take the flat plate that I'm about to weld on the end of it. Oh yeah, not quite yet though. We're going to do a ream fit to the to the half shafts because this is just going to be keyed into place. Um, well, it's going to be held in place with a nut, but um, a key key way to stop it from spinning. And that, that always works best with a tight fit. Otherwise, there'll be a, a bit of movement. So now I'm putting the putting the keyway into the half shaft with the tiny milling machine as, again. That's pretty simple. All, all that really mattered here was getting the getting the cutter centered on the on the shaft. The other this next bit isn't simple though. I'm making a um, what do you call it? A cutting tool to cut the uh, cut the internal keyway in the hub itself. So we've got an off cut of O1 tool steel here. I've already put put a shape on it. Um, I'm just going to get it get it quenched. I did temper it afterwards, but I didn't show that on on the camera. I don't think. There we go. Quench, quench, quench. Set fire to the floor, and there's the cutting tool. Okay, this is the inner por portion of the hub. Um, the bit that's actually going to attach to the half shaft. You can see I've already started cutting there. I had to lock the headstock in place. You can do that on my lathe quite easily just by putting it in uh, high gear and low gear at the same time and it, it locks it solid. Um, there's a little bit of backlash there, but I found it didn't it didn't even matter once I started cutting the slot because obviously the, it's easier for the tool to follow the slot that's already cut than to start a new slot. Um, so as soon as I started cutting, it was it was pretty straightforward, I suppose. Uh, excellent, excellent thing to have achieved though. It's the first time I've ever managed it, really, I suppose. Or ever even tried. I mean, I've done it with a file before, but that, that never works out too well because you're trying to work on something that you can't really see too well, and you need, you need to you need to get it completely straight. And once you're set up with a lathe, like you can't you can't really wander off course. You can't uh, you know, unless the chuck was to move. But like I say, it wants to hold itself in that same position anyway. The lathe's always going to go in and out in a perfect line, isn't it? Uh, it's surprisingly little force that I needed for this. Look at the state of this lovely keyway, folks. Oh, I'm so happy. And the, this key, I'm telling you, it's like a... It's like a stocky on a chick's lip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's lovely. It is lovely. It's lovely. This is the first one as well. I was going to film the second one a bit better, but um, what? God, keyway, keyway perfection. Anyway, it's uh, it's two in the morning now. <laughs> I'm going to go and put my freezing cold, dirty hands all over the misses. Good night, folks. The, the second half of the hub. These are the um, ball, supposed to flanges that are going to hold the walls. So I'm measuring off um, a a quad bike hub that I got. I thought I was going to use is that can plate the gold thing in the background with the two bolts sticking out of it. Always put two bolts in if you're trying to trying to measure between threaded holes I suppose because you can measure to the outside of the bolt it just makes life a lot easier and then subtract 
the thickness of one bolt from the uh, from the whole thing. Yeah. And now I'm just putting those flanges on on the uh, on the hub, welding them on. I did uh, I did face them off in the lathe again afterwards, but for some reason I missed that bit out with the video. And here we have uh, finished finished axle tubes. One of them's got bearing installed already. You see on the right hand side with the screws in, looking very nice. Looks just like a Swiss watch, you know. It's putting a bit of a uh, bit of oil on the O-rings. I, I did cut um, O-ring grooves on the inside of the bearing housing as well, so we could we could squish the uh, O-ring in between the the flange on the inside of this uh, or the register, I suppose, on the inside of this housing and the bearing itself. And I got my bearing fits lovely here. Um, I had to smash it in with a hammer, but it wasn't too tight, you know. Probably should have used a press, but you know, I didn't. This is fine though. Went in, went in nice. Putting the half shafts in. <laughs> Very tremendous satisfaction. All coming together. Putting a key in, and then smashing the hub on the outside of it all. Well, that key was trying to wander out the bottom, I think. That's why I've got the screwdriver in there just to, to make sure the key stayed in the right place. Now those uh, nuts are going in the hubs. I need a little recess in here for the for the washer and the nut to sit in halfway, so it's not not sticking out too far from the end of the hub. Now I'm just getting a bit of a, a bit of blue hyalurmol on the on the groove for the O-ring. Um, that is really just to hold the O-ring in place whilst I flip the whole lot over and, and stuck it into the diff. I've, uh, I've really ticked a few boxes off here, you know, the things I wanted to learn in the uh, in the shed. There's a, uh, well obviously cutting splines I've never done before, cutting a keyway, I've never done that properly before, and uh, I'm, you know, I'm just getting better at my bearing fits, which are pretty tricky. There we go, the whole thing's assembled. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, very, very happy with this, and, uh, and the things I've managed to do. It's not even like it's the bodge either. Like those those splines were cut really nicely. Uh, yeah, quite pleased. Quite pleased. Just throw a bit of paint on it, and on to the next part of the dump truck. So ne next up, I'm going to be looking at the um, engine and gearbox, getting that all mounted together. Um, uh, engine and engine and the CVT are meant to be together, but the the CVT and the um, and the reverse gearbox and were never intended to be put together but we're going to put them together um, so that will be the next video I expect we get the paint when it's dry um, the black everything everything underneath this truck is going to be black still haven't decided I'm liking the idea of British Racing Green someone suggested that because obviously it's going to be very fast with a 200cc engine um, I should probably do it British Racing Green yeah whoever yeah, came up with that idea well done I mean it's a nice nice colour for classic plant anyway I suppose um, anyway, <laughs> right, thanks for watching all this folks, uh, hope it's been interesting for you and hope to see you again in the next uh, next instalment of um, Mark II Homemade Dump Truck. Alright, take it easy folks, bye bye.
Oh yeah, like and subscribe as well if you if you want to. Please. Cheers.